What's up guys? So this video is about, as you can tell from the title, um, the connection between borderline personality disorder and autism spectrum disorder, which is going to be told from the point of view of a person with both of these. Funny story actually, um, well what's really funny is I was not diagnosed with either of these until uh, about two weeks ago, and I'm turning 29 tomorrow. <laughs> so. Um, as you can imagine, things have been pretty confusing for me over the years. And uh, as far as uh, I'm gonna, as far as this video goes, I'm gonna focus less on the particulars of each of these disorders, and just focus on how they are connected. Because you know, honestly, when I was first told, my counselor, she was actually really hesitant to diagnose me with either of these because I wasn't really showing the obvious signs of of the disorders. Because you know, for you know, BPD. Um, you know, the stereotype or like the first thing they look for is like, you know, the inability to be alone and the constant need to be in a relationship. I mean, that's only one type of BPD, but I, I most cleanly fall under the petulant subtype and uh, it's because I have, you know, major issues with identity. And here I go talking about the particulars of the disorder. But um, and honestly, it, it seemed like um, really odd that I was diagnosed with both at first, you know, because they're two major disorders. And a lot of points of the disorders actually contradict each other. You know, for one, a, lo a lot of people, you know, on the autism spectrum, and especially with me when I was younger, can't really read people's emotions too well. And they actually have to be taught that through therapy. And people with, you know, BPD, are nor from what I research, are normally very good at reading people's emotions, actually better than average. And uh, will often but will often uh, misread, you know, a neutral expression as an angry expression. It will naturally attribute the negativity to them. And because, but the thing is, what I explained to my counselor is, this wasn't natural for me. I taught myself how to do this through necessity because I had to live a normal, or at least somewhat of a normal life. And getting back to what I was saying before, it seemed odd that I had that I could be diagnosed with both. BPD, you know, the basic concept, and especially in regards to me, is that um, people develop it through being, you know, through invalidation. So they never really truly develop a sense of identity. So, you know, what's going to garner more invalidation than being on the autism spectrum? So, essentially what happened is, you know, everything, because what are the two main things that you're supposed to do when you're a kid? You know, well, I'll say, you know, from the age of 1 to 18, make friends and try to get into, you know, relationships with, I don't want to say the opposite sex, but the sex that you prefer. And for me, I didn't really, I mean, I'm 100% heterosexual, but um, I never had any desire to, you know, when I was young, you see, the thing is that a lot of people thought I was shy when I was younger. I'm actually not shy at all. In fact, when I was really young, I was, I was hesitant to, you know, interact with people because of all the negative interactions I had. I was actually, you know, for, for me, I, I always liked everybody, but, you know, nobody liked me. So, in turn, I ended up just not wanting to be around people. And plus, there was a simple fact I didn't really like hanging out with friends. I thought it was boring. I, I like doing things by myself. I'm a very independent person. I'm a loner. I'm an extroverted loner, I guess you could say, because I do have a lot of friends. But that wasn't always the case. I had to learn how to do that myself. You know, I kind of became like a scientist, you know, like an observer of people. And I figured out how to interact through trial and error, but, um, and how that connects to BPD is, even though I learned how to interact with people, I still, I, I didn't, I developed a facade that could get along with people. That wasn't really me. The me was the, you know, the kid, you know, when I was, you know, 10 years old, I wanted to, you know, watch movies and play video games. And as I went into my high school years, you know, listen to music and watch movies. Because the games, because I, I decided to stop playing games because that was too childish, you know, I needed to grow up. So I basically just, did, you know, denied a major part of myself. So as I grew up, you know, I, I became, a, uh, you know, I felt like a major phony. And the whole reason I would, that they finally, you know, were able to, my counselor was finally able to figure this out, is because with BPD, at least, you know, for how I interact with it, it only, you know, displays itself in very specific situations. Because, you know, at this point, instead of even trying to get into relationships, you know, I finally accepted that I really don't like relationships. And they're really just too much, you know, trouble. Maybe in the future I'll get into another one, but, you know, I don't see that happening for now. But um, what led to the diagnosis was, you know, I had an anger attack. And uh, I figured out that my anger attacks are caused by my inability to understand my own emotions. So I get confused 
which makes me, as a defense mechanism, my mind gets angry in order to get a sense of control over the situation, and I project this anger onto people around me. This particular one, there was um, a girl I was talking to, and uh, I didn't even realize it, but I guess I actually kind of felt vulnerable, vulnerable to her because I, uh, I liked her, and uh, you know, it's kind of natural for me now to kind of push that away because you know, it, it, when I get into relationships, my BPD, you know, characteristics come out. And I don't want to, it's not that I just don't want to hurt myself, I don't want to hurt other people around me. You know, particularly the women I'm in a relationship with. And what happened was this guy was trying, trying to talk to her, and I'm not sure what ha if they hooked up or whatever, but he was being really, you know, aggressive, really rude, and the thing is, I'm not the type to, you know, try to interfere with human biology, especially if I'm not being assertive about the situation, but I did not like how he was talking about her. And at one point he came up and told me, you know, I'm going to get that pussy. And for one, I don't like, you know, people talking about, you know, talking about my female friends in that way. And plus, for me, it felt like he was devaluing me. I, mean, I, I felt like he was putting himself above me. And that's the biggest trigger for me. As soon as I feel like you're devaluing me or criticizing me, because what it makes me feel like is people are putting me into this category of bad, you know, with my black and white thinking. And I pretty much usually just snap. Thankfully, we didn't get in a fight, but I, I pretty much got in his face and said, I'm going to fucking kill you. And um, that's why I haven't been back to, it was in Yokosuka where I used to live. Uh, I'm, I'm probably going to go there tomorrow, but I haven't been back since then. And I really, I'm only going tomorrow because it's my birthday. I really don't even really want to because I'm afraid another situation will pop off. But, but I guess in relation, because I kind of went off topic, but how that relates is that inherent lack of understanding of the people around me, you know, kind of connected with my inability to understand myself. Actually, that's a perfect example. That's how those two, you know, conflicting factors came in contact with each other and, you know, just, you know, created a fire. So, you know, I always try to give a little bit of advice in these videos. I'm not sure if I really, I'm never sure if I explain anything thoroughly because, you know, I'm fucking autistic. My thoughts are scattered all the time. I guess the main idea I kind of want to give out of this is, um, you know, if autism is not supposed to exist, you know, if people on the autism spectrum are, if that's actually a disorder, then why are there so many people? It's 1% of the population, and even higher in certain uh, populations, particularly Japan. Is it that it's a disorder of thinking, or is it a necessary component of a functional society? You know, where do all the creative ideas come from? But I guess the main idea is, fuck what other pe people think of you, you're awesome. So, as always, if you like my video, subscribe, if you like, like my music, buy it, and if you hate me, tell everybody. Out.